coming up on DITV. We'll tell you what the UI is doing to help cult the cult help cultural resource centers on campus. And later, one UI student shares her experience in India. We'll tell you how you can get involved. And we'll look at the Iowa men's basketball team's big win over Wisconsin last night. As well as we'll catch up with the tennis team after their busy opening weekend. It's a roller coaster of temperatures this week. I'll tell you more later in weather. We've got all that and more coming right up. So stay right there because DITV starts right now. Good morning and thanks for joining us today. I'm Lauren Varel. And I'm Ethan Gutstein. One, one student is back on campus this morning. A federal judge has ordered the UI to temporarily reinstate a conservative Christian group as a registered student organization. Back in November, a business leaders in, in Christ sued the UI after the, status of, after the status as a student organization was revoked. The UI made the move after an openly gay student was denied leadership position in the group. They say the business leaders in Christ were discriminating against students. Last night, a federal judge ruled that this move was a violation of groups' freedom of speech rights. The judge put a 90-day injunction in place. We'll keep you updated as the story develops. A school shooting at a Kentucky high school has left two dead and 17 injured. A student from Marshall County High School in Benton opened fire at a student common area Tuesday morning before classes. Governor Matt Bevin responded to the shooting, expressing his shock about the incident. This marks the second school shooting in the United States in the past two days. We have more news from Washington this morning. After reaching an agreement to reopen the federal government, lawmakers have gone back to work on immigration. Yesterday, a new bill was proposed by Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, Jeff Blake, and Democratic Senator Dick Durbin. But the bill was denied by President Trump. The proposed bill was the latest attempt to ease tensions between political parties on immigration. According to a tweet from President Trump, both sides will continue working to find a deal on DACA by February 8th, but with a big addition, additional focus on military strength and border security. The University of Iowa student government has approved legislation to fund the UI's four cultural and resource centers. At a meeting on Tuesday, they announced plans to give more than $30,000 to the project. The funds will be dedicated to programming for undergraduates, including events, leadership development, and academic support, among other programs. UI President Bruce Harold spoke to the Daily Iowan, stating that both the school administration and UISG have discussed what further improvements could be made to the cultural houses. President Harold stated, quote, I think at the end of the day, whatever we can do to make students feel more comfortable when they're not in class and identify with groups that they want to hang out with, end quote. For more on the changes, check out today's copy of the Daily Iowan, where reporter Marissa Payne reports with more. Well, Ethan, despite some of the weather of the warmer temperatures we've been seeing here in Iowa, February is going to bring back the cold to areas in the Rockies, Plains, and the Midwest. That's right, Lauren. It's due to a jet stream that is flowing over the eastern Pacific Ocean. It will eventually hit western North America, and that's when we are supposed to see those temperatures drop. A cold front will be moving in from the north and will hit the Midwest next week. So that means we should expect Iowa temperatures to be similar to the Chicago area when the cold front hits. But some good news, Lauren. The cold temperatures are not expected to be as extreme as ones we saw back in December, the first half of January. Well, Ethan, I'm hoping we might, not have, we might have a couple more days of warm weather before that cold front hits. But let's go ahead and toss it over to Max in the weather studio to bring us more. Max? Thanks, guys. Yesterday's 12-mile-per-hour winds created conditions for low wind chill. Thankfully, the wind will have died down this morning, creating partly cloudy conditions with a temperature of 25 degrees. This afternoon, we will be experiencing mostly sunny conditions with temperatures rising to 37 degrees. This evening, the weather will taper off to 31 degrees. This week, we will be expecting to experience fluctuating high and low temperatures throughout the course of the week. Thankfully, it is expected to warm up tomorrow with sunny conditions and temperatures in the high 40s and mid 30s. Friday will be partly cloudy and very windy, with wind expecting to reach 20 miles per hour. 
Thankfully, the temperatures will be expected to reach a high in the mid-50s, but fall to the low 30s. Saturday, the winds will slow down and the temperature will reach the high 40s and fall to the mid-20s. Sunday will be mostly sunny with temperatures hovering around freezing and later falling to the high teens. Monday, we will be expecting similar condition with lows in the mid-20s. Unfortunately, we won't be putting our winter coats away just yet. I am Maxwell Bernstein with your weather conditions. Now let's head back to the desk. The un unemployment rate in Iowa for 2017 has just been released. Iowa ended last year with a total unemployment rate of 2.8%, a number that low has not been seen, this seen the since the year 2000. This makes Iowa the state with the fifth lowest unemployment rate in the entire country. However, 8,800 people left Iowa's labor force. That means there were fewer people actively looking for work. Additionally, approximately 7,100 jobs were added in December, bringing the total number of jobs to 1.6 million. Job gains were strongest in manufacturing, health care, and transportation. <clears throat> Winter break is a time that many students use to relax, recoup, and spend time with their family. But some UI students take it as a chance to experience another country. The India Winterum allows students to do just that. DITV News reporter Junya Kim met one UI student who took the course and reports with more. Winter vacation can be a boring or exciting time depending on how you spend the time. Today I've met a UI student who had special experience in India during winter break. Sia Tortorellis, University of Iowa junior, has visited India for last winter break. She applied for India Windtream, a program that provides various activities and three semester hours at the same time. Sia got a chance to help and educate either physically or mentally disabled kids in India. And we observed several classrooms um, in India. We were primarily focused in um, the Satya Special Schools was our uh, host organization. So we were with um, a lot of the special needs students. We did um, get to see some government schools and some private schools as well. She recalled that this was special experience enough as she could visit a nation where she has never been to. Also, she could witness fresh Indian culture and society. So much like stimulus always. There was so many colors all over the place and sounds and smells and um, just I know that everybody I talked to, just the honking, the nonstop honking of the cars um, was a little bit something to get used to, but overall I'd say I adjusted pretty well. She would highly recommend the India Wind Dream course because it was purely amazing to her. It's like, when else am I going to go to India? Like, that's not something I would have chosen on my own. So when the opportunity presented itself, I was so gung-ho, and now I definitely want to go back. Like, going in, I was like, this is probably going to be my only time, and now I'm like, I need to find another time to get back to India. It was incredible. Reporting from the main library, Junior Kim of DITV News. Well, Lauren, Iowa basketball has struggled as of late. I know, but last night they were able to pull That was an amazing game last night. Yeah. Let's go ahead and toss it over to Natalie and Delaney in the sports studio with more. Thanks, guys. You guys are right. It was nice to see the Hawks come back with a win. Well, the Iowa men's basketball team responded pretty well after that brutal loss the Boilers dealt them last Saturday. The Hawkeyes hosted Ethan Happ and the Wisconsin Badgers in what proved to be a pretty good showing for the Hawks. Isaiah Moss hit big man Luca Garza down low where he got the bucket and a trip to the free throw line to help start Iowa off with a 9-0 scoring run. The buckets didn't stop there for the Hawks as Ahmad Wagner passes it back to Bohannon who keeps it to himself to go in for the pull-up jumper. Iowa had no problems with the Badgers and took this game 85-67 and we're all feeling as good about the win as Nicholas Bear was. We knew that the Purdue game effort was, you know, not what it needed to be, so we came out here and made an adjustment, and, uh, you know, we played the way we needed to uh, to win games in this league. It's always great to get a 9-0 run to start the game. You know, I think that that was important. Uh, but defensively, again, you know, we were we were getting stops because we missed some shots early in that 9-0 run. You know, we, we had some looks that, you know, normally go in, but, we you know, we got stop after stop after stop, and... You know, so we were able to play from ahead. It feels really good. Those past couple of weeks, practice has been tough. Um, obviously, when you're losing, that's how it should be for practice. But um, anytime you get a win, it's <laughs> nice to have a little relief and let let yourself know that things are okay. So Iowa will travel to Lincoln this weekend to face a hot Huskers team. 
Iowa men's tennis has finally returned. The Hawkeyes took on Marquette Golden Eagles last Friday right here in Iowa City. DITV's Easton French has more on the story. The Iowa Hawkeyes men's tennis team started off their season last Friday at the HRTC Fieldhouse against the Marquette Golden Eagles. The Hawkeyes took home a flawless 7-0 victory. Most of the attention seemed to gravitate towards freshman international from Poland, Peter Smiatana. Peter took home the W in both single and doubles play, earning his first official win as an Iowa Hawkeye. Head coach Ross Wilson was impressed by Peter's performance and hopeful that his future with the program will be a bright one. Uh, I, thought, I thought Peter played well um, for a freshman coming out in his first match um, to win in two sets and pretty much be in the lead the whole time. Uh, very impressive. You know, we, we knew coming in when he got here that he was very talented and he's able to beat good players and, you know, stepping into the team environment, which is a little bit different than tournaments, he, he proved that today and you know, hopefully uh, tonight against Western Michigan he continues. Peter felt the pressure during his debut performance, yet still managed to overcome and outperform the competition. Oh, at the beginning I was a bit stressed, you know, it's my first match as a Hawkeye and in college tennis. But, we, you know, after a couple of games, I got a bit relaxed. I got co some confidence, and I did everything to win. The Hawkeyes' next matchup will be against the Arizona Wildcats Sunday, February 11th. I'm Easton French reporting DITV Sports. It's good to see young Hawkeyes getting their wings, isn't it? It sure is, Natalie. The Iowa track and field is off to a fast start as the star of the show was none other than Marie Harris. Will Silverstein spoke to the junior runner at this weekend's event about his performance and goals for the rest of the season. At last weekend's Larry Rhetoric Invitational, Marie Harris ran the 400 meter dash against past Olympic qualifiers and world record holders, but it did not phase him one bit. Well, after a while, you race them a couple times, so then you learn their race strategies, you learn how they run, and then once you realize you've raced them more than once, you're on the same level as them. So not only do you look up to them, you're also as fast as them and you know you can compete with them. Track and field director Joey Woody knows Harris has the skill and drive to push himself against the toughest competition in the country and the world. Obviously he's a, fa a fantastic athlete, but just the way that he competes, you know, those are the type of athletes you want on your team. Obviously he's an exceptional talent, but he's just a competitor. So it doesn't matter who's in front of him, he's going to go after him. Even the collegiate record holder and a, a world championship medalist. So. You know, I think he really gained a lot of confidence this weekend to feel like he can go after that uh, NCAA championships. Harris is now the seventh fastest runner in the world and first fastest in the Big Ten, but he knows that he still has much to prove to show his teammates what kind of world-class runner he could really be. It's truly a blessing. I've never opened up to be the fastest in the Big Ten. I mean, I've been there before, but you know, there's always good competition. They usually always beat me out or I'm number two or number three. So to be able to be number one right off my first 400 makes me really happy. And I know that there's more to come. Harris also helped the Hawks take home some hardware by winning the 4 by 400 meter relay. Reporting from the UI Rec Building, this is Will Silverstein, DI TV Sports. Harris and the rest of the Hawks will compete at the Black and Gold premiere at the UI Rec Building this Saturday at 12 p.m. That's all we have in the sports studio today. Come back tomorrow for a preview of the Iowa wrestling team's duel against Michigan this Saturday. And come back again on Friday for our courtside show with Mary Kay Harrion and Zach Mackey. Guys, back to you. That'll do it for this week's Wednesday morning edition of DITV. Be sure to check out our, our website, dailyiowan.com, for all of the latest news from Iowa City. For DITV, I'm Ethan Gutstein. And I'm Lauren Varell. Thanks for watching and have a great day, Iowa City.